If you're watching me for the first time, hi, I'm Anurag, and this is my three-year-old Royal Enfield Classic 350 Signals Edition. Royal Enfields, especially the classics, have been the best and the worst motorcycles of all time. Depends on who you ask. The debate on whether these bikes make sense or not has been forever. You may find yourself on either side of the fence, but you cannot deny the fact that Royal Enfield has managed to create a legacy of not just selling bikes, but selling dreams. This story is about one of those dreams and how it came to fruition. This is me, and this is my father. Back in the day, since about two decades, my dad has been fond of Royal Enfields and always wanted to own one. Ever since I had grown enough to understand things, I remember every time my dad saw a Royal Enfield on the streets, he used to point at them in excitement and say to me, Gadi Asavi Rashi. He owned a Hero Honda Splendor back then, and I never understood his obsession with the bullet. He always wanted to own this bike someday. But as every other middle class family, there were a lot more important things to think and worry about other than an expensive toy that brings you nothing else than just joy. Monthly bills, rent, medical expenses, school fees, high school fees. Years passed and responsibilities came one after the other. So yeah, the long lost extra wagon dream was not even close to being a priority. Few years passed, I grew up and my dad supported my dream of being an artist. After which I started working and earning. And just like every other middle class family dream, we too dreamt of owning a car someday. And few years of me working, I finally bought us a brand new car. But the car was a utility that we lacked. So it obviously made sense for us to get one. And dad had his Bajaj XCD 125 by this time, which he used for the last 11 years. But this little Bajaj had gotten old and was finally starting to disintegrate. It was time to think of an upgrade. Dad's decade-long dream of owning a Royal Enfield came to my mind. And he was too excited to refuse giving it a shot. I remember going to the dealership with dad and I could already see the kid inside him. Super excited but too intimidated to take the test ride. He had never ridden a bullet in his life. And so he asked me to ride the bike while he sits at the back and watches me experience it. And while I rode the bike, he sat at the back and kept on saying, doesn't it actually feel royal to ride this bike? <laughs> I could for the first time in my life feel that finally living his dream through me. And I said to myself, there's no looking back from here. We returned to the dealership, booked the bike, and a few weeks later, the Royal Enfield. Our very own Royal Enfield Classic 350 was in our home. Dad for the first time swung his leg over his brand new Enfield and rode it like a king. Few days later, Dad finally lived his dream. A dream he saw a decade ago of riding his Enfield on the highway and saying, Gadi Asavi Tarashi. My father never had the amount of privilege I have today. Life struggles were always a constant and dreams like these felt criminally extravagant. But he lived with his dreams for years. He decorated it with hope and eventually made it come true. Longer the dream takes to become a reality, better the euphoric rewards. Now you must be wondering, what changed? How did this bike eventually end up in my hands? My dad rode this bike for a year. Uh, he took it to places around, took it to the market, traffic, highways and the works. And um, one fine day, he was out for some chores and he came out of a shop and uh, was about to return home and then decided he'll turn the bike. And then while taking the turn, he somehow just lost balance and he didn't realize that his left foot was too close to the bike on the ground. And because of that, he could not stop the bike from falling. Dad was at the age of 68 then and he tried his best to lift the bike with just his arms and while he did that he didn't realize that his right foot was very close to the exhaust on the right and dad burnt his leg twice within five seconds of him trying to pick the bike up and he did eventually pick it up he then returned home also got himself treated by the doctor him being a diabetic uh, it took a while for the burn to heal also, dad, dad also realized that he had undergone a heart surgery very recently in the past and picking the bike up like that wasn't really a smart thing to do, although it did not have any repercussions. Royal Enfields are heavy, that's just how they're made. But for a 68-year-old man, the weight is a bit too much. 
My dad lived his dream of owning this bike for a year and enjoyed it with all his heart. But he had to let go of it. It hurts your heart to know that while you're growing and building your independent self and achieving all the goals you've set in your life, at the same time your parents grow old in front of you and make you realize that they are not the immortal superheroes you always believed them to be. He himself asked me to take this bike to Mumbai and use it while he uses a lighter 125cc bike. I then bought him a very simple Honda Shine and he has been using that ever since. But he's happy to see me ride his Royal Enfield and always keeps asking me about the bike every once in a while. And whenever he visits me, he adores his Royal Enfield. And here starts my story with my dad's Royal Enfield. To be very honest, I have dreamt of owning a different bike since the last few years. The Classic 350 was my dad's dream that ended up in my hands. And I am being very, very honest. I have not regretted even once. This bike rewards you with a feel unlike any other. And trust me, with any words possible, I won't be able to articulate the feeling one gets while riding the Classic. It is weird, it's analog and it's raw. Obviously not a refined engine by any scale of imagination. But ride it on a country road on 5th gear at 60 km per hour. There. That is where the bike listens. That is where it speaks to you. That is where it will bring that smile on your face. Now I might sound like I'm romanticizing the idea of simply riding a bike. Maybe I am. But I'm not lying even a bit when I say that it's actually therapeutic to experience that bliss. Riding this bike for the last two years, it has grown on me so much. I am obviously well aware of all its flaws, called it unreliable, always gave it so much shit. But I have never found myself in any difficult situation because of this bike. Uncalled for punctures every now and then, sure. But who wishes and expects for punctures, right? I may have been the biggest critic and roaster of this bike. Because it is my bike. It is mine. I have paid for it and I have the full right to criticize it. But despite of all its flaws, the charm that it possesses has infected me. Also given the Royal Enfield brand legacy and the lifestyle that comes with it, you unintentionally become a part of this cult, for the lack of a better word. And I actually don't mean cult in a negative way, rather a culture of sorts. You relate to what the world says about this bike despite its negatives. The fact that it's heavy, lethargic and vibrates still doesn't overshadow its charm and the way it makes you feel while riding it. Alright, let me try and articulate. One of the reasons the Classic 350 has so much popularity and fandom is because the way it makes you feel after you sit on it. It feels like you're sitting with pride, with your arms wide open, back involuntarily straight, legs comfortably gripping the tank and feet straight down resting on the footpegs. You automatically feel like you've achieved something to deserve this commanding position and it stays with you. I have never seen a person sitting slouched on a Classic 350. One might ride like a moron, but the way they sit on it describes very beautifully how this bike rewards you to just sit on it. No other, I repeat, no other bike in my experience has rewarded me to just sit on it every single damn time. Now you may have noticed my struggle to articulate the feeling. This is not because I'm trying to make up shit and blabber as I go. It's because that's how indescribable the feeling is and yet it is so infectious. Many have asked me, why don't you review your own bike? I would have reviewed it and talked about the features, but there honestly aren't any. This bike is all about the charm, the looks and the feel it gives you. It's like having a vintage gramophone in your house. The size of it, the weight, the impracticality doesn't make sense. But the heritage, the history, the old school charm of it. And once you start playing it, the melodies that come out are gold. and no high-tech speaker would ever replace the symphony that proceeds. This is exactly how it is with the Royal Enfield Classics. The fact that they are mass-produced and accessible to everyone is why they get so much slack and criticism. Doesn't mean they don't deserve it, but this is a bike that is made and built for a very little and niche group of people, but is available to everyone. And that's why many just don't get it. Even I did not get it, to be very honest, until I lived with it. I learned so many things about bikes, how to take care of them, how to give them some and get so much more in return. 
with every small problem i have in the bike the process of me trying to figure out what's wrong finding ways to fix it and finally succeeding at it is as rewarding as solving a math problem and not everyone loves math but why am i suddenly getting so romantic about this bike you often realize the worth of things in life only before and after you have them it is time it is time for my royal enfield classic to retire i don't know if i'm keeping it or letting it go right now but it is no longer going to be my daily driver why am i suddenly moving on because i found myself grown out of it there have been days when i have mistreated this bike expected it to do what it's not supposed to or designed to do pushed it to its limits and realized it's not the bike that can't do things it is me that expects a lot lot more than i should from it and i don't blame me or this bike either i dream of a different bike for a reason as much as i love adore and value my dad's classic 350 there's still a lot more i wish to have and experience and this baby is not meant to do that Our brain weirdly gets used to things that give us the dopamine we crave for. And after doing it over and over again, we eventually normalize it to the point that we crave for more and we can't get it. That is when we feel like moving on. Happens with things, activities, people, relationships, and the whole world. Doesn't necessarily have to affect everyone in the same way, but it did make me realize that in the case of this bike don't get me wrong i still love the way it feels riding this bike on the country roads on fifth gear at 60 km per hour no other bike is ever going to replace that feeling maybe that's why my heart is not willing to let go of it but these bikes require attention and care i wish i had the privilege of owning and maintaining two bikes simultaneously and give them equal attention and to afford doing that Sadly I don't and that is why I think it's time for my classic 350 to retire. I'm still not really sure if I want to let go of it or not. But if I do, I want the future owner of this bike to know the story of how it came into my life. The story of its cars, the story of places it has been to, the story of the way it has made me and my father feel over the course of us owning and riding it. I have learned a lot owning this bike. about bikes about riding about the community and also in a way about life in general and in the course of me learning that i have improved as a biker and a human this bike has made me patient and made me learn to take things easy and i'm not trying to be pretentious and label these things to just royal enfield as a brand i'm sure you the one watching me right now may have dreamt of a bike or maybe own one think about the times you've spent on your bike and reflect on the things you've learned and earned along your journey these moments these memories stay with you and while you explore the world you explore yourself from within of all the materialistic possessions i have any bike i own is always going to be the most dear to me in my life god damn it you know what i need to ride it for one last time I am turning the page to a new chapter in life. One that is not written yet. A completely blank canvas. Many of you must have subscribed to my channel for many reasons. One of those reasons is this bike, the Royal Enfield Classic 350. Some also say that they've been considering buying the Classic after watching my videos, and I'm absolutely grateful for that. This bike is the reason I am talking to you guys at this moment. Today is 13th of March 2022. Today is the day when I get to own the bike of my dreams. And while you're watching this video, I may be riding my very own dream bike for the first time in my life. And as I finally turn to a new chapter, I would love it if you guys accompany me towards my new venture. Because I rode my dad's dream and you guys fell in love with it. My next ride is my dream for years. 
and I mean it when I say it. I have been wanting, craving and dying for this day to become a reality. And now after years, the day has finally come. That being said, you must be wondering what is going to be my next ride. Maybe you already know it if you know me well. Regardless, that's a story for another time. Until then, I hope you liked what you just saw and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.